Hi, it's Nicole McGuirk for Lawn Fawn, and today I have a card featuring Lawn Fawn die cuts and stamps, as well as the Add a Little Dazzle metal sheets that I have die cut with the Lawn Fawn dies. First thing I'm going to do is cut a few small sections from some of the metal sheets. These are really thin, so they work great through your die cutting machine. You can emboss them. There's all kinds of things you can do with them. I am using some scissors to cut these apart rather than a paper trimmer. The metal on from these sheets will dull your blade, so I just use scissors instead. And I'm going to grab my big shot here and lay out that sheet of metal. It will flatten quite a bit running through the die cut machine as well. These are some of the cloud dies from the Spring Showers Lawn Fawn die set. And I'm going to die cut these a couple of times so I have a nice assortment of cloud die cuts. The metal is really, it's shiny, but it's nice and it's not bulky or sharp, I guess I should say, or anything like that. So it'll be nice and flat and won't add a ton of bulk to your cards. They can be a little tricky to get off. My cutting pads here are pretty well used, so they're getting a little stuck. Again, I'm going to run the clouds through a second time so that I have plenty of these for my card design. Then I'm going to grab, there's a little strip of stars from the Lawn Fawn journaling card die collection. This is the 3x4 stitched journaling card, and it comes with several um, additional die cut pieces that you can use with that card or separately. And the stars in this particular die collection were the right size for my design. So I'm going to die cut those out of three colors of these metal sheets. The kind of gold color, the peacock color, and then a magenta raspberry type color. That way I have a whole assortment of stars. Now you can see most of them didn't pop out of that sheet, which is great because they actually are die cut all the way through. I just need to push them out, but they didn't get stuck to my cutting pad that way. So I'm just going to run those through and then set all of those to the side while I work on the rest of my card. I'm taking some of the Tim Holtz Distress Paint in Chipped Sapphire, Peacock Feathers, and also scattered straw, I believe. And then I'm taking Tim Holtz's watercolor paper. I spritzed it with water first, and then pressing this watercolor paper into the paint. Much like you would do with the Distress inks, the paint's gonna give a little bit more um, full coverage, I think I would say, more like a paint would. The great thing about these Distress Paints is they work well with water. So the color wasn't blending quite like I wanted it to, so I went ahead and spritzed the painted paper with additional water from the Mini Mister and kind of you could see the, the paint moved out really nicely. I am removing a little bit of that paint from the yellow section of the paper with a baby wipe because some of the blues had blended or bleed bled <laughs> into that yellow. And I'll just dab that out of the way and then set my paper aside to dry because I really prefer how it looks when it air dries. In a pinch, I will use my heat tool, but I usually prefer to let it air dry. And it really doesn't take that long. I've stamped the frog and the crown from one of Lawn Fawn's stamp set. This is the Critters Ever After. And I'm coloring in the frog and the crown with Copic markers. You can see I started with my lightest color, which was the BG90, and then moved to the G85 and G99 to blend out those colors and add some shadowing and depth and dimension to the colored design. You can keep adding as much as you need to and then blend out with your lightest color till you get the desired result. I did something kind of fun with this particular image. Once I had the base color laid down the way I wanted it to be and blend it all out, I went back with my darkest color and dotted in some detail using the tip of the brush marker. I did this with a couple of cards about a week ago and um, for some fish designs and it just turned out really fun and gave a really fun effect. So I thought it would be cute for this frog as well. It just adds some nice detail. 
I had a little pink for the cheek and if the color is still a little dark you can go back with your lighter color and then go and kind of dot over any of those um, little spots and it will make them a little less harsh if you want to. Then I went in with a couple of yellows for the crown. Didn't have to do a whole lot here, just a tiny bit of shading and things like that. Once I have those how I want them, I will take the coordinating dies and die cut both of these images for my card. Once the background's dry, I'm going to take the 4x6 stitched journaling card and die cut the background. This is only going to die cut three of the four sides. It's going to be coming from this piece, panel I guess, it's going to be coming from the top of the card and I love the way it looks with three sides die cut with that stitched design. I'm going to lay out a few of my die cuts just to kind of make sure that I have everything where I want it to be. And then I'm going to go ahead and stamp my greeting. I'm going to stamp this greeting from the Lawn Fawn Lucky Stars stamp set using some Versamark ink and then I'm going to use both some gold and white embossing powders to emboss the greeting. Just being really careful where I place the embossing powder so that I make sure and keep each color right where I want them to be. Once I have the greeting stamped and embossed, I'm going to take one of the thought bubbles from a Little Birdie Told Me Lawn Fawn stamp set and stamp that design right around my greeting and then die cut that with the coordinating die. So again, applying some of the white embossing powder to this, I'll heat set that and then die cut it. I love the way the greetings look stamped on vellum like this when you can still see the background through that greeting thought bubble. I've already gone ahead and adhered quite a few of the metal and stamped and colored die cut accents to my card. I'm using some glue dots. I found this was a great adhesive to use with the metal die cut pieces as well as any of the other cardstock stamped pieces. I'm using some small die or glue dots rather and then the micro ones for the little stars. So I'll just keep adhering all of that till I have all of my stars in place sprinkled throughout the design. I'm going to use some foam adhesive on the back of this stitched journaling card die cut panel and then place that on my card base for a little, for a little dimension. And then I'm going to go ahead and add just a couple more stars here and there. I felt like I needed a, a couple more or a couple more pops of color. And then the last thing I'm going to do is take some teeny tiny gemstones and place them on the crown of the frog. And that will complete my card design. I love the way these shiny metal die cut stars really complement the theme and feel of this design. For more information on this card plus the supplies I've used, please visit the Lawn Fawn blog. Thanks for watching!